Hi, welcome back. My name is Dr. Gary Bedicher, and we're going to pick up with the entity relation diagrams. So we have entities here with rectangles, a diamond shape for the relationship. We talked about the cardinality there. We mentioned having attributes. We underline the keys. The derived is shown with a dashed line. If we see a double bar around the entity, that's known as a weak entity. Otherwise, it's a strong entity. We see this as a double line around the, the uh, bar going to the relation. Total participation there. So let's continue on. And oh, we saw the uh, composite attribute here, address, made of sub-attributes under it, along with the phone number, which was a double oval there. Well, let's continue with some other features here. One of which, let's say a faculty member has insurance. Well, we might use the word has, and we have faculty has insurance. And I'll just abbreviate it now. Now, this is an example. Let's say a company requires all faculty have to have insurance, so we'd have a double line there, and the idea is a faculty member has one insurance provider, and that one insurance provider, let's say Blue Cross, might provide insurance to many faculty members. Now it's not, it's not a total participation here because let's say a company gives the option of uh, Blue Cross, Aetna, uh, Health Select, for example, and not, if you have 50 faculty, might not, they might not choose at least one of the options. So 25 might go Blue Cross, 25 go Aetna, Nobody chooses Health Select, so it's not total participation on this side there. Well, coming back to faculty and student, we have faculty teach students, but we would also have a relation where faculty advise students. And in the case of faculty advise advise students, a faculty member might advise more than one student. And then likewise, a student might be advised by one faculty member. Now we could get into a discussion and say, well, what if a student is multiple major? They might have more than one advisor, which is possible. Or at certain academic institutions, faculty do pure research, don't advise any students, so it might be a zero dot dot n in this particular case. But for now, we'll assume it's a one to many relation. And now, in this example, we have the case where when a faculty advises students, they are assuming a particular role. So another feature, we put the word, we'll get another marker here. We put a role in there, which means the faculty is playing the role of advisor at that point. And we could argue that the student is playing the role of the advisee there. So this is an example where we have multiple, we have a role, and in this case it could be teacher or student, for example. We leave those out by default. So this is another feature of entity relation diagrams. Now one of the things that happens is that we have ER diagrams, which I just showed you the features for, but we also have something which is called enhanced ER diagrams, and typically that's written as EER diagrams. Well, what makes the difference between an enhanced, uh, what makes ER diagrams enhanced? And what happens is that we introduce subclassing generalization into our ER diagrams. So let's say, for example, a student might be either a graduate student or an undergraduate student. So in this particular case, we draw a line coming down. We draw a circle, and I'll explain what that is in a second. And we would split that off. To, and I'll just put a grad 
and we put UND for underground. And typically there's these two kind of curved lines there, which means it splits off. Now what's the idea of this circle right here? What the circle is, we specify if a student is grad only, undergrad only, or a student could be both. And to do that, we have three possible letters that could go in here. If a student is exactly one and no more than one, we would put the letter D for disjoint. In some institutions, a student might be a, a grad student at the same time he or she is an undergrad student, so we put the letter O for overlap. There's another letter called U and union, but we'll, we'll hold off on that for a second. So we'll put the letter D, which means the student is a grad student or an undergrad, but not both at the same time. Another thing is, would a student, would every student be one of these two groups? If so, we would have total participation here. Well, we'll leave that out for now because let's assume a student's just taking a class, part-time student, he or she's not grad, not undergrad, and if that were the case, we might have something like part-time over there. So we would not have every student fitting into one of these two particular categories. And the idea is that when we have the subclassing going on, then what we want to do is decide which attributes go where. And so attributes common to grad and undergrad students would be pushed up to the super class, such as the student ID, the major phone address, and so forth. Now at the undergrad, we might have attributes like high school, uh, which high school he or she went to to attain their, their um, degree. We might have the SAT scores, which are unique, let's say, to undergraduate students. On the graduate side, we might have uh, undergraduate university. That is, where did they get their bachelor degree? And then we might have something like the GRE score, which graduate students would take and undergrads would not take until they take that. So we put those attributes that relate specifically to undergraduate students here, those attributes that relate to graduate students we put there, and then those attributes that are common we'd put there. Things we would not want to do, we would not want to put like student ID here or student ID there. If we're doing that, then we realize, well, wait a second, that's common here, common here. Let's push it up to the super class. So that's an example of an enhanced ER diagram in terms of subclassing. We'll stop here for now and I want to show you some other features related to uh, EER diagrams, one of which, how do we deal with this cardinality? Secondly, how would we take this subclassing and include that into a design of a database? Thank you.